Chris, you have brought your mother, Ms. Hall, to court today because you say she hid the identity of your father from you for 14 years. Now, today, there's a man waiting outside of the courtroom that your mother believes could be your biological father, yet you still have no idea if that's the truth. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Hall, you admit you let your daughter believe that the man who raised her was her father, knowing that it was a lie. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you had hoped to someday tell her the truth, but a family member revealed your secret to her before you had the chance. Now, Ms. Curtis, how did you come to find out that the man you originally thought was your father was not your biological father? My grandmother, she sat me down and she said that she wanted to tell me the truth about who my father really is to be and that my mother has been lying to me for the past years of my life, which was time was 14 years old, and that the man at the time was not my father. She said to me, I want you to take it to your grave if your mother never owns up and tell you yourself. And I said, okay. And I felt that it was the truth because I always felt like I was adopted. My father, he really never really showed me the affection, the love at all. Actually, Your Honor, yes, I did not tell my daughter at a young age about who her father was. Simply one, because I was a young girl, I was pregnant at the age of 15. I gave birth to her when I was 16 years old. When I was 15, I met Kirk. And Kirk lived a pretty much like a fast lifestyle. Okay. And, you know, which attracted me to him. And being young, at the time when I got pregnant, I didn't know, I didn't even know that I was pregnant because I didn't know anything about the body. You didn't the, know what it meant? You were just so young? Yes. And then what happens? Um, about a month passed by, and I, I would say I started uh, my cycle. I, and I was like, oh, wow. You know, I was shocked. Okay, well, maybe I'm not. I'm not pregnant. I'm not okay. pregnant. So, moving on. I wind up meeting another guy, which was the alleged father that I told her that was her father and allow her to grow up believing that that was her father because that was what we had discussed. I wind up having sex with this guy and later, a month and a half after that, that's when I found out that I was pregnant. Okay, so you really weren't sure who the father was? No. All right, so Ms. Curtis, when you finally confronted your mother, and told her what your grandmother said, what did she tell you? She began to tell me her own version of the story about who my alleged father at the time, she said, he, he's not really your dad, baby. And I said, okay, I already know that. My nan already told me. She told me another name. She didn't tell me Kirk's name, she gave me another name. So I said, oh, I'm just so happy. I'm gonna call Nana and I'm gonna tell her that such and such is my dad. And then she goes, oh, no, no, no. I need to tell you the truth. I said, well, what is the truth? I thought you said such and such is my dad. She goes, no, really, your dad's name is Kirk. And I said, okay, I knew that too. I was just so waiting for you to tell me the truth. She admitted that that was true. She admitted But gave you a third name. Yes, Your Honor. Wow. Well, actually, Your Honor, I knew one day that I would have to sit up real down and talk to her and let her know who her father is. The time that I set forth for her was at the age of 16. At but the age of 16? But what if be, something was supposed to happen to me in between me, the time? I'm, I was the mother. I was the one who took care of you, raised you. You raised me, but I didn't have a father. It did, it did not matter whether you had a father or not to me because I was the mother. I was the one that was supporting you, keeping a roof over your head and making sure that you went to school and you got the education that you needed. I don't care what she say. I wanted a dad. I've always wanted a dad. You can be that mother. You can always be a mother in someone's life, but I still need my own father figure. It doesn't matter at all. Ms. Hall, can you understand how this news, it was like a bomb just dropped on her? And I agree, Your Honor. But even with that being said, I've always wanted a brill to understand that I was young. I made a mistake. I didn't want her to be a victim of that. She wanted to live her, the rest of her childhood life through me. She wanted me to do the things that she wasn't able to do. I didn't even go to the prom because I don't know how to dance. I don't know how to do anything that my father should have taught me. 
what I wanted for her, and I want her to understand. She want me to do I, what she wanted to do. She want me to do this. She want me to do that. Go here, go there with her. You are child, Abril. You are young. You don't make choices for yourself and do what you want to do when you fall. Father and daughter dance. Everybody, everybody else got to do it. You did not want to go to father and daughter dance. I, I want... didn't have a father to go to a with. I feel like she making this be more than what it but, is. But no, 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 no. Now, Miss Hall, before you start minimizing it, you got to listen to your daughter because she's telling you what she feels. This was an event that everybody I knew got to go to. It's called the father-daughter dance. And I, it, when she said it, my heart dropped to my feet because I've been to the father-daughter dance. Mm -hmm. I could only imagine everybody getting ready at school and chattering and talking about the father-daughter dance and you saying to yourself, well, I guess well, that's somewhere I can't go. Well, actually, Your Honor, she did have a father to go with at the time because I was married at the time with a father figure that was in the home. That's why I say Don't I Don't ask your daddy for nothing. Always ask me stuff because she knew in her heart that my alleged dad at the time was my father. And she felt guilty. That's what it was. She felt guilty. And she want me to get all bonded and attached with him. Because at her time, when I turned 16, that's what she wanted to tell me. So I won't have a close bond with him. I won't be so hurt. And so you never really felt that father-daughter connection yes, with Honor. this man. So then you heard about Mr. Whitaker, and then you found him. Yes. Tell me about that. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So then you heard about Mr. Whitaker, and then you found him. Yes. Tell me about that. The same night that me and my nana, we had the discussion and we found out where he was. Then I started to write him letters and everything. Excuse me, Your Honor. When all the rumors and everything was speculating through the family as far as like about who, who, the, the baby, daddy, mama drama that was going on, I found through a cousin of mine where he was in prison. I wrote a letter to Kirk in the prison telling him the things that was going on. And I was kind of nervous after I got through writing the, the, writing the letter. So I took the letter and I hid at my, mother's, at my mother's house. Someone in the family found the letter, mailed it off. But at the time, I did not even know that the... That you wrote it, but you didn't mail it. That is correct. And then uh, there was a letter that he wrote back to me. What did it say? I never Your got Honor, the she letter. She doesn't even know. I have the letter right here. Jerome. Thank you. You're welcome. This is the first time she'll ever see the letter. He does state he's willing to be the father she needs and deserves. And it's signed Kirk. And, Your Honor, I know you may not understand how I feel about this right here, but that's where I feel like I was deceived in Cross be because I had my time <laughs> that I had set aside to do the right thing. She and wants me to be like, I'm the bad person, regardless of someone else having to come to tell me about who is a pro supposed to be my biological father, you should have told me, don't wait a set and a time. You don't know what a child goes through day to day. And I understand you have the right to feel the way that you <laughs> because feel. Because of you and putting me through all of this, I don't want kids. I don't want to have kids. Because I want no possible chance that my kids have to live without a dad. I told you that when you said, what and are you talking about? And that's why I always have told you, make the right choices. And that's why I've always, Your Honor, she felt like through her whole childhood, I've, I've been hard on her. Yes, I've, I well, have the been. reason why I understand is because you didn't want what happened to you, the decisions you made, you didn't want that for your daughters. Right now, I, I really do want to hear from your witness. Uh, Jerome, if you please could escort Mr. Whitaker into the courtroom, please. Sure. Mr. Whitaker, thank you so much for joining us. Now, do you believe you're Miss Curtis's father? Well, Your Honor, I'm actually somewhat doubtful with... And having said that, it's because of the way the situation went down. When Tamika initially told me, hey, uh, I'm pregnant, uh, you're the father. But as I remember, she was also in a relationship with someone else. That was actually convenient for me, being that I was with somebody. So, I, I mean, I'll take my part. Hey, uh... So you're saying she told you she was pregnant, you thinking to yourself, it could easily be someone else. 
not me. Of course. The way it went down, when she told me that, she knew that the lifestyle that I was living, it was fast. I got, I was making money fast. I had a lot of women coming at me saying, oh, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, and then only just to want money uh, to spend it on whatever and just I say, oh, I need the money for abortion. I never asked you for any money. I'm not saying she's asking me. She never have me I asked you for any money. Right, so your point is, is that this wasn't the first time somebody said they were pregnant. Exactly. And in your mind, you were thinking, yeah, well, you might be coming after me because of this or that, and I don't truly necessarily believe it. And not only that, is that, that she was uh, in relation with somebody else. At that time, You see yeah. how they're both unsure and everything? Like, she don't know, he don't know. How am I supposed to expect and believe that he is my dad after being lied to for so long? It's hard to believe something after one lie and then another. And it's, it's hard to believe. And you all understand how she feels, am I correct? And yes. I, and I do understand. In his letters, Your Honor, he was certain that were I was Were you his ever told definitively that you were not her father? Yes, I was. Now, when was that? That was... Had to been, like, a year or two later. But after she... And who she, told you this, Kurt? It was a... It was a friend... A mutual friend of ours. I don't know who could have told him that, but that's just something he's saying. And then 14 right. years later, I get a letter in the mail um, saying, hey, you have a child, you have a child, along with a picture. And I'm like... Okay. And so when you see the picture, what do you think? I'm like, looks like a mom, you know, resembles a mom, you know. I'm not, I'm like, okay, this is my child. First it's not, then it is. I mean, what am I, what am I to think? If, you, if I'm the actual father, why would you give the child someone else's name and I'm the father? I, doesn't make sense. You must have had intercourse with that person even for and that, that to come correct. up. So that and means again, you're not your sure, honor. you don't even know. And Miss Hall, look. You didn't really understand what was going on with your body, so you didn't understand at that time who you were pregnant by. That is correct. You said that. If you don't know, how is he supposed to know? <laughs> there is doubt all over this courtroom. I felt That's like... why we're here. <laughs> well, Your Honor, but to me, if you ask me both of my parents, they're really great compulsive liars, starting with my mom lying for all those years and my dad lying in all of his letters to me. All of his letters. So, wait a minute. While he was in prison, you got a letter from him. Yes, And I then did. you wrote him back. Yes. Explain to me wh he... what happens in that relationship. He wanted to know little things about me so he can get to know me through the letters. He promised me when he come home, he'll do things for me that he's never done. When he got home, he didn't do none of that, and he still haven't done none of that. I was trying to help him get out of the halfway house so he can come home and spend time with me. But he didn't want to do all that. He wanted to break everything that he said, spend less time with me so he can be with her. That's all they really care about. Have you lived up to those promises? Well, Your Honor, real... No, that's a yes or no question. Have you lived up to those things? No. He was Once... using me. Using me. I was not using you. Once Why do you feel he was using you? Dad's time, but they have somebody to write to. Dad's somebody to talk to. That's, that's, not, that's not when true. When you got a home. That, that's not That's not true. Were you writing to her because you thought she was your daughter, or were you writing to her because you just passing the time? Um, it was not just a past time. When, when, of course, when a, when a child that may be yours, you want to know, you want to build a relationship. When you're not incarcerated and you're trying to get back into society, you're trying to work, uh, your but times are conflicting. She I, goes to school, I have to work. Help you get were a you job? telling what Ms. You Curtis, doing? I may or may not be your father? What were you saying? Because I have a letter here that says, I'm willing to be the father that she needs and she deserves. Your Honor, when he first got out of prison, he went to the halfway house. The purpose of me trying to get him a job with my mom is so during his little break times, he can spend time with me. Around that time, it was the summertime for me, so there's no excuses of me having to be in school, because I never had to go to summer school. I've always been a good student, straight A, <laughs> good at singing. So, here's a, here's a young girl job, saying, Mr. No Whitaker, excuse. that I had my whole summer off, and I tried to make arrangements so you could work, so you'd have some time to spend with me, but instead of spending that time with me, you spent it with my mother. Well, th that's not totally true. My work is demanding. I mean, and being that my work is demanding and I may not be able to spend time with her, she has been where she's been disrespectful. She's even claimed that I'm not even... I may not even be a father. I mean, Okay, so, so wait, let's cut to the chase, because now you just brought up a point that is relevant. 
Do you believe this is your daughter? I believe it could be my daughter. I believe it could be my daughter. How, how can I say when she was messing with other men and you give someone else another yeah. man's and name? Like I, I, think, said, I, I think, think it's time. That? I think it's time we have the results. There you go, Judge. Thank you. You're welcome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Curtis versus Hall, when it comes to 22-year-old Abrel Curtis, Mr. Whitaker, you are her father. <laughs> Mr. Whitaker, Miss Curtis, how you feel, Miss Curtis? I feel really good. <laughs> I'm really happy <laughs> to have my dad. Oh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. You are? I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. Miss Hall, I'm happy for her, and I, I just want to see the best. I just want the best for her, and I want her to understand that. You know, mommy had to make some choices. Well, you know what I think is wonderful about the truth? That the truth, I always say, is the most important foundation we can all stand on. Do you get it? Yes. I'm so happy you found your father. Good luck to you all. Mrs. Rogers, you admit you had an affair and it is possible that another man besides your husband fathered your child. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Rogers is here along with your mother-in-law seeking the results of a paternity test. Now, Mrs. Angela Rogers, you claim your son's wife cannot be trusted and you want her to come clean about her real motives for being here. You believe the plaintiff is only after your son's military benefits. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so, Mrs. Rogers, your husband appears to be caught in the middle of you two ladies. Now, why did you bring them to court? Well, Your Honor, me and my husband, we had a rough patch in our relationship. Uh, he wasn't really showing me any affection. He never really paid any attention to me. We weren't really spending any time together. It was pretty much just like we were living in the same house. There was no love there. He wanted to go visit his parents, and they lived 300 miles away, and I did not want to go. I decided that I was going to go to a party with my friend. Well, I went, and we had a few drinks. There wasn't really anybody there that we knew. And I wandered off with a guy, and she wandered off with a guy. And I remember we slept together, and I remember falling asleep. And well, Your Honor... Yes, ma'am. You know, he came to visit me because he came for a funeral. She could have come. Her reason for not coming is because we don't like her. Well, you're But does she think going out and sleeping with somebody while he's at a funeral is going to make me like her? Right, so... I mean... Well, Your Honor, I'm trying to understand this. You're in a relationship. You're together. Yes, Your Honor. You're supposed to be at a funeral, but you decide you're not going. Well, Your Honor, I did not go because since me and him have been together, his mom and his family compared me to his ex-girlfriend and say that okay, I'm yeah, a okay. homewrecker. But yeah, she is a homewrecker. He was How with somebody else. How am I a homewrecker okay. when he was he broken was, up with her? He was still living with her. He had a kid with no. her, and you come in and started sleeping, sleeping with he her. He was sleeping in the See, garage. She hold was on. sleeping in the garage hold with him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mr. Rogers, I'm getting a glimpse into your world, right? Yeah. This is so the bottom line thing. is you're supposed to go to a funeral. Yes, ma'am. She decides I'm not going. And then how do you end up sleeping with somebody else during the funeral? I, I'm not a very well drinker. Okay, but she. Okay, let's go ahead. She has a baby. Okay, she she gets pregnant. She has a baby. She makes him sign this birth certificate even though she don't even know if it's his or not. I didn't so, make him do anything. Mom, you have this birth certificate. This is your son's signature. Mm -hmm. Jerome, will you please hand that sure. to me, please? So, you had the baby, Ms. Rogers, and you weren't certain who the father was. No, ma'am. However, you had him sign the birth certificate, or you asked him to. 
he signed the birth certificate on his own. You did loan. it voluntarily, Mr. Rogers? Yes, ma'am. I did it mostly voluntarily. And at that time, I believed, you know, I just wanted to believe I don't know if there's something mine. called mostly <laughs> voluntarily. It's either voluntarily. I'd say it was voluntarily. I mean, there was some coaxing, but that, that didn't influence my decision Did you know at, at the time you signed the birth certificate about the guy at the party? Yes. All right. So did you question whether Coda was your son? I did. If he signs so it, So you then weren't sure they if Coda was your son, but you still signed the birth certificate? Yes. I wanted us to be a family. I wanted us to get along. I wanted everything to be okay. You know, the perfect little marriage and perfect little family. But, you know, now that everything's going on with the military, I need to know if he's really my son. I need to know if I've got something to, you know, look forward to, something to fight for. I mean, I've asked her a thousand times about what she did that night, and the only thing I get is I blacked out. I this or I that. I mean, there's only no way you can just show up with to some place and then nobody even know who you are. You don't what think kind of I party tried is that? Who shows up to a party with nobody So you don't even are? know who the guy is? Like I said, I blacked out. I didn't really remember much. Someone as small as you are, you don't need to be having and I have too many since. drinks. To where you end up blacking out. You're blacking out so bad you don't even know who you slept with? That's almost unbelievable. But for the fact that you're standing here and telling me that it's true. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Rogers, yes, take me to the day that she told you that you may not be the father. Well, that was how it really all started, is when she came out and said it, it just kind of rocked my entire world like I didn't really know what to think. I walked out. I mean, I stayed gone for a little bit. I came back because I love her, because I wanted to be with her. I didn't, I mean, right then there was no evidence that he was mine or wasn't mine or anything. Now, I mean, He's older, he's over a year old now, and we can't go to friends, we can't go to family without them saying, oh, he looks just like her, he looks just like her, he looks like her dad. I mean, nobody asks if I'm the father. They say, they say, who's the father? I can be standing right next to him and somebody say, is he the dad? Who's the dad? They don't see the resemblance even though we're right there So next you're to saying each other. people never see a resemblance. Do you see yourself in Coda, do you feel like? I do see myself. I mean, I feel like he is mine. How about you, I don't know if it's you, because I've been with him so long, but I feel like he is mine. I want him to be his. More than anything, I want him to be his. I'm going to be devastated if it's not his. Because, you know, he's a year old. You grow to love this little boy. And even if he's not his, I'm still going to love this baby. Because he's my grandbaby, regardless. <laughs> Ms. Rogers, I see you're very emotional. You say this situation is destroying your relationship with your husband. It is, Your Honor. I just feel like I want everything to be normal. I don't want to fight. I just want everything to be happy. I want to feel like I'm wanted. I want to feel like his wife. Yeah, I don't feel like that's true. I want to feel like I'm wanted. I want to feel like his wife. Yeah, I don't feel like that's true. You say you don't feel like that's true, Mr. Rogers? I mean, I don't. Tell me what you feel. I feel like our, the first part of our relationship, I mean, I was distant, but I did everything for her. I do everything now. She doesn't have to lift a finger throughout the day. I work, I come home, clean, cook, do whatever. I've been the sole proprietor. For this and child. so I've what about her statement him. do you so strongly disagree with? Trying to make it work, trying to make us be a happy little family, make us be like a normal married couple, all of it. You don't feel she's committed to the family or to the relationship? My problem is the whole this, time. I think she's just disrespectful in a way that she needs to be more respectful, like the whole funeral thing. Okay, I got it that she thinks his family didn't like her, Thanks. But she should have been Thanks. there anyways, not for her, his family. That's respect to him. Thanks. She should have been there respecting him, well, been there for would him. I, why would I want to why would I wanna be around family. people who don't want anything to do with me, who sit there and yell in my face okay. about how his ex-girlfriend is so much better than me? She was. Wait, she was. Oh, really? Then the why? She oh, really? Oh, really? Then why do you have to have a DNA test on the Let's get some order. Let's get some order.
Now, Ms. Rogers, we talked about it, but the main reason why you may want to be sitting next to the man you're in a relationship with at the funeral is so you're not laying in the bed next to somebody blacked out and you don't know who you had sex with because you're drinking away your sorrows and your frustrations. Yes, Your Honor. My problem with her is whenever I call the cell phone, his cell phone, she answers. And because I'll say, can he's I in talk? the shower he's in the or he's, he's sleeping or whatever. What's wrong it's... with that? But she'll right? say, I'll have him to call you back. Months later, I still ain't got to call back. If you're the mother that I believe you've been, seems like he should be calling you anyway to check on you. <laughs> she doesn't want him to. That's the problem. I she never told him. I have him. never told him he could not call you. Mr. No, Rogers. Not once. Baby. Let's get some order. Mr. Rogers, what is it that you feel is your mother's issue with your wife? I th I'll tell you what the issue is. I think it's just no. disrespectful. Ms. Rogers, I think her I asked your like son yeah, I to think tell me what he thinks the issue is. Mr. Rogers, what is it that you feel is your mother's issue with your wife. I th I'll tell you what the issue is. I think it's just no. disrespectful. I Ms. Think, Rogers, I think her shooting I asked your like son yeah, I to think tell me what he thinks the issue is. I think it's when we first got together, there was a lot of things said about her doing things and the fact I had a baby with my ex and she's just, you know, gone because me and her got together a while after me and my ex broke up. but. You know, a lot of people say you break up for a week, you get back together later. In my mind, I think that's what everybody was hoping for, was we so get back thought, together. you feel like your mother was hoping you'd get, get back, back together ex. with your ex. Yes, because we already had a son. We so, already had a life. And that's mm -hmm. what she wanted. Yeah, well, this was before she got pregnant. Yes, okay, it was my grandbaby. Of course I wanted them to be back together. You wanted them they to try had to my, work it they out. They had my grandbaby. I didn't want to see the grandbaby walk out of my life. And that's exactly what's happened because they can't get along with her. We don't get in contact with our grandbabies all because they all can't get along. That's why it's so important that I want her and me to get a good relationship. I want that relationship with her because I want this baby in my life, regardless whether it's mine. I want this relationship to work. But regardless, you have to understand that I am not her. Okay. I will never I be that. her, and she is not better than me. I don't think she's better than. But I also you tell think it to me all the time. But I want Cody. her to stop using Coda as a weapon. That's my main thing. I don't use him yes, as a weapon. I, no, 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 no. How we, do you feel she's using him as uh, a no. weapon? Mm -mm, that is such a lie. Yes, you did. Y'all get in a fight. First thing you do, remember, remember January. I was in the mountains working. You and him get in a fight. You already told me I could keep that baby all night. You take that baby because you and him is fighting. You say, you yeah. ain't never going to see that baby get Because you ain't I never was going to leave and go there. You ain't never going to see that baby get Hold on, hold on. Baby hold on. Hold hold on. on. With me and I wanted him to stay. He should have stayed that night. Hold on. Ms. No, Rogers, is that not. true? Did you come get the baby and you, you wouldn't let him spend the night with his grandma? Yes, that is true. Just because his father had been drinking and was not using his right mind. But and I did not me. want him. You were taking his me. side. You were taking his side. I'm his mama. I was wait a minute. between both so of you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why couldn't the baby stay with his grandmother? Well, you know, I just look at it this way. If, you know, she couldn't have enough mind to separate us two from arguing in front of him. Uh, but I did separate what? you two, and then your dad come up and started acting like a crazy fool. Yeah, because he had solved how things All right, went down. Let's get some order. This is important because Mr. Rogers, you've enlisted and you are about to in January. In January. I'm going to boot camp in January and shortly after I'll be deploying. So you are enlisted in the military and will be deployed. Yes, ma'am. And let me first say we appreciate your service. Thank you. And let me further say I understand now why you're saying when you go, you're feeling very overwhelmed about what you'll be leaving behind. The uncertainty, not knowing if Cody is your child biologically, but also leaving behind your mother and your wife who can't seem to say two words to one another without exactly. it going to level 10. Exactly. I want, I want to know before I leave. I mean, I'm afraid of what's going to happen with me being gone. If she couldn't feel my love for while I was gone at a funeral, how is she not going to be able to cope without me there for a year?
how am I going to be gone for a year and something maybe happen to me and then her be able to have a relationship with my family so that my son, yes, I'm going to call him my son because I want him to be my son. How is he going to see his grandparents? How is he going to see my brothers and the rest of my family if I'm gone? If something happens to me, I want to know that she is going to let them see him and that it's not just going to be her family. So one of your fears and one of the main reasons you're here today is because you're fearful that if something happens to you, God forbid, that you would have never known if Coda was truly, it's truly your mine. son, yes. your biological son. And I mean, I'm going to love him either way. I've, been, I've spent the whole pregnancy with her. I spent the first <laughs> year with him. I love him to death. I don't care if he's mine or not. I still love him. He's every bit of part of my life as my family or her. And while you ladies argue back and forth, do you really understand what's at stake yes, here? Yes, I'm worried that something's going to happen. This is killing me. Okay, I understand that people have to go off to war to fight for their country. I got that. But also, I'm a mom. I'm terrified. I, I don't want to see my son go off to war and die. I see so much of that. I don't want to see that. It's tearing me apart. But I also can't stand the fact that if that did happen, heaven forbid, that I would never get to see my grandson because I can't form a bond with her. I want to stop this today. I want to leave here today knowing that me and her can sit down and stop this because we've got that beautiful baby there that deserves all the love he can get and he deserves all of us not just some of us in his life i haven't kept you from him yet so these results are hugely impactful today i think it's time we get them jerome you have the envelope thank you the results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics. And they read as follows. In the case of Rogers versus Rogers, when it comes to the paternity of one-year-old Coda Rogers, Mr. Rogers, you are his father. Oh God. I'm happy here. I don't know I got something to fight for. I know you. he's mine. That's all that matters. I've got him. Yes, And I'm going to do everything in my power to give him the best life I can. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything I do. I do love you. I want y'all to work things out and be a happy family. Now, I have to say this before we go. Ms. Rogers, Mom, you standing in the middle physically right now. <laughs> We're going to have to work with you, OK? Because I know you love the baby. I know you love your son. And I know you really do love I do Alexis really love, I want even them though to you're hard on out. <laughs> But you've got to find that healthy balance of being a support system versus just being all up in their mix. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. We wish you all the very best. Thank you so much again for your service. Court is adjourned.